I'll be reading Psalms 40, verse 1 through 4 from the ESV. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud or to those who go astray after a lie. Yes, thank you, Lord. That is such a strong verse. And I'm going to follow up behind that with mm -hmm. Psalm chapter 46, verse 10, which reads, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in all the earth. Tonight's topic is what are you waiting for? Yes. I'm Shay. And I'm Quinla. Welcome to Midnight Mastermind Ministries. Yes. Let's get into it. So Shahidra, I want to tell you something. What? Um, for Well, for the people that haven't been here before, they probably don't know that the Lord kind of downloaded a list of topics for us, right? Yeah. He gave us the first 12 episodes of season one for our podcast. Isn't God good? He, he's always good. Yeah. All the time. So when I read through those topics, this particular one just stood out to me and I got so excited. I, I don't know. I read it and I was just like, I can't wait to do this one. I can't wait. I, I didn't, there was just an excitement in my spirit. So my question for you is when you felt like the Holy Spirit gave you that information, when he asked you, or he said, okay, this is going to be one of the topics. How is he asking you that question? What, what did he mean by it? What do you think he was trying to say? You know, I felt like the tone of the question really was from a place of encouragement. Hmm. And what I heard from the Lord was, more of a sense that I've given you some things to do. I've placed purpose in you. I've placed giftings in you. I've yeah. placed talent in your hands. And the question came, what are you waiting for? Mm. I've given you all that you need. Yeah. What are you waiting for? And I, I think that's really where the Lord allowed us to go into his word mm -hmm. to really get that piece of encouragement mm -hmm. to push into this next layer of what God has said for us to move into and, and to move in without fear, mm -hmm. to move in with all faith and authority yeah. um, and power. Thank you, Lord. According to his word. Absolutely. Absolutely. And according to his, the prompting of his Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Because, um, so there's just, we've talked about this before. There's so many layers to what God can say. Mm -hmm. And um, the Lord can speak literally, right? Rhema word, right now word, yeah. right out of his word for you. 100%. And it can be, um, some people might say it's a strange interpretation, but it could be specifically what the Holy Spirit is wanting you to know right at that moment. So he can do whatever he wants. And we give him free reign here. But I, I want to tell you what happened when I read it. Okay. Yeah, because this is what this is what the Lord does. He he can be exactly what you need him to be. OK, um, when I read that question, what are you waiting for? A couple of different er interpretations came up for me. OK, the first one is just like you said, you've got you've had some promptings, you've got some giftings, you, you've had some ideas. What are you waiting for? Well, you know, what's stopping you? Why haven't you started on this? The other one, though, is what exactly? are you waiting for? Right. Mm. So I, um, I thought about that. I was, and the Lord was kind of showing me this picture in my mind. Um, when you go to the grocery store and you're waiting in line, you're not just waiting there randomly. You're, you're waiting to check out your groceries and to go put them in your car and get home and make, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Or when you go to an agency or an office, whatever you're waiting for, you're going to the, Bureau of Vital Statistics, you're going to get a birth certificate. You're going to the registration office, get your car registered. 
you don't, nobody stops and finds a line that people are waiting in and just gets in line and says, okay, I'm in line. I'm waiting just because mm-hmm. they want to wait. No, you're not waiting randomly. You're waiting for something, an yeah. actual outcome. Yeah. And so I think that one of the things that God is trying to highlight for us tonight is this idea of wait, because he tells us that a lot in his word yeah. to wait, but we wait with expectation. Yeah. There's something we should be waiting on. Okay. And however that wait may look for whoever, there is definitely a reason and a purpose in our wait. And that is what gives us sometimes the fortitude to keep waiting. Okay. So do you mind if I share some stories? Go for it. Okay. Recently, I went to uh, visit a a town uh, where I used to live and I was there and I went to brunch with my daughter. And while I was there, now listen, y'all, the Lord will send me all sorts of places and this is what I'll do. I'll go. (laughs) I'll just go. I'll just go. Yeah. And um, my daughter, she's a teenager and man, I used to be so scary to her because she just never knew what the Lord might whisper in my ear. Now she's come a long way. Okay. So we're at this restaurant. We're about to have brunch. We're sitting there. And I've told you this before. Um, some people would say that I can exaggerate. I would agree, but I'm not exaggerating. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you the story, how it happened. We're sitting there in the booth and there was a round top table, uh, kind of to just adjacent to us. And there were some senior citizen women there. Okay. And there was about uh, seven or eight of them all sitting around the whole crew. It was, and they were, they were, um, celebrating one of the ladies birthdays. Okay. Now, Lord, help me tell this story with truth and grace and let everybody that needs to hear it, get exactly what they need from it in the name of Jesus. So sitting there at the table, And we notice that one of the ladies is purposely picking on the waitress. Okay. This lady was being mean. She was literally being a bully to the waitress. And when the waitress would go away after she would ask her for whatever she wanted, when she would come, you know, she would say, oh, watch what I do next. You know, she's just really hyping up. She was, and she was hyping up her her birthday crowd. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. At one point, um, the waitress just got tired and, and, and I couldn't, I mean, honestly, I couldn't blame her. The lady was really going overboard. And so, um, she came back to the table and the lady just kept on picking, you know, I want this and you didn't bring that and you didn't do this. And, and the young lady's like, okay, well, I will, you know? And, um, at that point, my daughter looks across the table at me with this look of knowing because it's not her first rodeo. And she says, mom, you going to do something? And I said, what? I said, I've been sitting here the whole time praying that the Lord don't make me have to get up and say anything. And she said, mom, we're not going to be here very long. And she's like, but you're going to let this keep going. This is my daughter who mm-hmm. used to be afraid whenever I go places. Cause she never knew what the Holy spirit was going to have me tell people. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, oh, it's with y'all. I really was praying that I could just enjoy my little biscuits and gravy and go home. Okay. Oh, mm, no, that's not what happened. That, that's not how it went down. So the Lord has me get up. I go over to the table. I talk to the ladies and I had to nicely, you know, just kind of put my hand on their shoulder. And I, I just had to ask a few questions. I, I said, would you be okay if, you know, if this was your daughter or your granddaughter, would you be okay with this type of behavior? And I said, and when you think about, you know, how, how little they make, um, I saw that one of your friends felt very uncomfortable when you told them to put away the tip. And I had to just mention to them, you know, what's important is that you do what you think is best and whatever you feel like God is leading you to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that just stirred up some, one of that lady was like, Oh, the nerve of her to bring God into this, which I just told her quite honestly, um, you can count on me bringing God into anything. That's kind of what I do. 
So to make a long story short, which, you know, I'm really bad at, Mm -hmm. I finally left the table um, after giving my little, you know, my, what I felt like the Holy Spirit had led me to do, Uh, went back to the table. And afterwards I told the manager that this woman had been very, very um, rude, rude, mean, in essence, just tried to humiliate their waitress. And she said, thank you for letting us know the table that was in front of us had already mentioned it. Um, What they also mentioned or some table mentioned is that I had said something to the table. And so they were really thankful and they were really sweet. And there was a whole bunch of other stuff that happened. Um, I was shaking after that because I didn't want to have to confront the table, but I had to do what the Holy Spirit told me to do. And one of the things that I had mentioned at the table was, you know, all of you ladies have been around long enough to know what the right thing to do is. And you've been on this earth long enough to have authority to choose. No, look, I feel already like you're not going to tell me what to do unless you're the Lord, right? Because I've been here for a while. I know a few things. I'm not going to say I'm perfect, but these women were all mature. They were mature women. Mm -hmm. And I left there and I think I was a little broken hearted because I thought to myself, when do you, when do you decide like what, when's, when is it too young or too old to decide I'm going to be what God wants me to be? I, and I was thinking mm. like, I don't want to, I don't want to wait until I'm 69 or 75 or 89 or 101 to finally walk in the things that God has called me to do. Right yeah. now, this is something else you need to know. So oddly enough, The weekend that I decide to go back, they have this huge storm, okay, Mm -hmm. huge storm, and the hail was the size of your hand, literally, and there were very few places that were untouched by the the hailstorm and the windstorm. There was like 85 mile per hour winds. Oh, wow. And it's, and I used to live there, so it's really probably one of the strongest storms that I'd seen. Um, so trying to make it back home. I was calling around trying to find places to come and fix my windshield because I had three completely dented in windshield spots that were huge. And this guy came out, God just gave me favor. A gentleman came out. He's so sweet. And when he came out, he was with his daughter. His daughter is his handyman, his handy person. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she was so precious. And, um, we got to talking because that's what I do. And, um, (laughs) and so she's about to be a senior in high school. And as we were talking, I was like, well, you know, what are your plans in life? Where are you going? What are you doing? And she says, oh, I just got back from this mission trip. Wow. You know, we worked, we built, we helped build orphanages and we did vacation Bible school. And she, it's like, she couldn't wait to tell the story about the zeal and the love of God in her heart. And I was like, yes. That's, that's it. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And so it reminded me of some scriptures and I'm going to share them. Okay. Okay. So these are in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and it goes like this. Um, don't let the excitement of being young cause you to forget about your creator. Mm. Honor him in your youth before the evil years come. When you'll no longer enjoy living, it will be too late then to try to remember him when the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are dim in your old eyes and there's no silver lining left among your clouds for there will come a time when your limbs will tremble with age, your strong legs will become weak and your teeth will be too few to do their work. And there will be blindness too. Then let your lips be tightly closed while eating when your teeth are gone. (laughs) And you will waken at the dawn with the first note of the birds. But you yourself will be deaf and tuneless with quavering voice. You will be afraid of heights and of falling. A white haired, withered old man or woman dragging himself along without sexual desire standing at death's door and nearing their everlasting home as the mourners go along the streets. Then it says in verse six, yes, 
Remember your creator now while you are young, before the silver cord of life snaps and the gold bowl is broken, before the pitcher is broken at the fountain and the wheel is broken at the cistern. Then the dust returns to the earth as it was and the spirit returns to God who gave it. That's so good, isn't it? So my interpretation of that question was, what are you waiting for? Right. It's like, what, what are we waiting for? Well, there's never, there's, it's never too early and it's never too late to begin to do exactly what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do and what God is calling you to do and what God is showing you to do. And, you know, so that, that was my, that was my thought about that question. Yeah. So we can go ahead and end the podcast. <laughs> No, we can't because <laughs> you have to answer your part of the question. Yeah. So it's funny that when you ask that question today, that my answer was about encouragement. There's a part two to how God showed really what was behind that question in a second format. Mm -hmm. What are you waiting for? Mm -hmm. And it ties into what you just read in Ecclesiastes and ultimately that verse speaks to me because there is a sense of urgency. Yes. And at that time, so I guess a week ago, as we were talking about this, um, I felt in my spirit just this sense of get to it. Mm -hmm. And the Lord reminded me that um, in this season that we've been in pandemics and we've been watching all of this stuff happen in our society. We've been living through certain things that have been what I'm calling drills. Yeah. Okay. So um, if we take the first part of your story mm -hmm. and you are sitting at the table with your daughter mm -hmm. and your daughter has been with you, right? So in essence, you remember when you were in school and the alarms would go off, mm -hmm. it would be, depending on the part of country you lived in, earthquake drills, tornado drills, right. hurricane um, drills, hurricane drills. Um, unfortunately, our kids now go through active shooter drills. But the reality is your daughter has been in seasons where she has been operating with you, but it's been drill season for her. <laughs> Bless her heart. Bless her heart. <laughs> but I, I want to propose that we have all been in a drill season. Mm -hmm. So um, with, with what you experience with this table, mm -hmm. putting into perspective your daughter as a teenager versus these women, mm -hmm. um, they've had a lot more life experience yes, and a lot more drills. But at some point, you have to know what to do in real time yes. when the emergency is, is now. Mm -hmm. And so your response even though it was with hesitancy, mm -hmm. <laughs> you operated in obedience. Thank you, Lord. Right. And so in this season, I think this sense of urgency is don't wait to start practicing For sure. what is going to need to be second nature. Absolutely. Right. And so we can sit there and question God. We can sit there and question, am I supposed to do this? Am I supposed to say something? Am I supposed to stand up and do the right thing? Am I supposed to stand in the gap? Am I supposed to pray? All of these things God is saying, I, I've <laughs> been putting you through drill season Absolutely. because of what's coming. So good. So it answers exactly the question you said. I, I've already given you everything you need. Mm-hmm. Why are you asking me this question, right? When you said that you feel like the Lord has been saying to you, you have everything you need. Mm -hmm. Is there anything either specifically or even broadly that you feel like the Holy Spirit is saying, I've already given you these tools and this is what yeah. I want you to do. So um, it's really interesting that you had the verses that um, God gave you. And I think I shared with you that God gave me Psalms 23. Mm -hmm. And in 2023, this is really the chapter of the year, if mm -hmm. you will. Um, and so I'm going to read Psalms 23. And then I'm going to tell you what the Lord said. Do it. Okay. I'm ready. I'm listening. So the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Mm -hmm. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Mm -hmm. He leads me still. beside still waters. 
He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for, for his, his name's, name's sake. sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in, in the, the presence, presence of, my enemies. of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. And my cup, my overflows. cup overflows. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, Lord. Okay. So what are you waiting for if that's the promise? Ah, oh, that's so good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there has been, and we've said this before, trauma, mm -hmm. fear. If you didn't listen to our last um, episode, go back and listen yes. um, because this is relative. We talk in detail um, about the things that we want to be free from. And so when we are operating fear in fear, it's hard to move forward into the things that God has said yeah. and called us to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's like being in a random line, right? You just, nobody go, you just going through the motions. Yeah. You're just sitting there waiting for something or wanting, hoping for something, but yeah. you don't know what to stand on. That's going to make you know that there's going to be a good outcome yeah. and give you the fortitude to move forward in that process of waiting. Yeah. So in this verse, I want to say that this was really encouraging to me. So if you break it down, right. Mm-hmm. It says, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. I shall not want. Thank you, Lord. So that means that whatever you need in the midst of it. Yes. You already have You it. already have it. Not only is he going to give you what you need, mm -hmm. but he's going to give you rest for the journey. Thank you, Lord. All right. So he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me by, beside still water. Yes. So there is peace. peace. In the midst of mm -hmm. the storm. I don't care if it's golf ball size, hand size, <laughs> hell. <laughs> if it's sitting in a diner and the people next to you are raising hell, mm -hmm. he leads you besides still waters. Still waters. And there's also, you know, there's refreshing in the water. You better come on. There's, you know, it hydrates your soul. Yeah. It makes things flow better. You know, there's fluidity in your, in the, your ability to move. So, and you know me, don't get me started on the, don't get me started on That's the water. Your jam. You, you know, I'll be at the beach in a minute. <laughs> So yeah, that's what I heard in that. Just remember that refreshing, not only just yeah. being at peace, but also being refreshed in that peace. Yeah. God is with us and wherever we go, yes. wherever our feet tread. Mm -hmm. um, he's not only leading us, this word says that he's leading us for his namesake. Thank and you, so Lord. for him to get the glory. Yes, Lord. Right. It's not about us. Mm -mm. It's all about. Absolutely. God the Father, God the Son, and oh, the Holy Spirit, Spirit. the Trinity. You, Lord. What else are you getting out of this? Um, well, it's just this whole idea of when we know that there's an expected outcome. Mm. If Ooh. you if you really if you really know, okay, not just you know in here, but yeah. that knowing in your soul, the gnoskos, yeah, knowing that you know by the power yeah. of the Holy Spirit that God's going to meet you or he's got what he promised for you or, you know, the word that he pointed out to you, the rhema word, or, you yeah. know, the word that you read that morning that he's, he's really going to yeah. do what he says. Yeah. Then, you know, when we get thirsty or we get tired or we get irritated or we get fearful or we, any of those things, right. We can go back to it and say, no, 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 no. I know that I know that God said, that he has this expected outcome for yeah. me. And then I can, okay, here we go. I'm, I'm back on the journey. Yeah. I'm able to get there. I'm yeah. able to do this. So as you were talking, mm -hmm. I just caught a glimpse of something. Tell me. So I'm going to share it. Okay. Um, you ever been to the circus? Yes. <laughs> it's been a minute since I've been to the circus. <laughs> but usually at the circus, they have um, the high wire. Yes. Acts whether it is the tightrope mm -hmm. or it's the acrobats that are flipping each other mm -hmm. hand to hand and they catching each other. And in most circuses that I've been to, there is a net, mm -hmm. 
right? Mm -hmm. I don't do heights too well. <laughs> it's not your favorite? It's not my jam. I hear you. But it's entertaining to watch those who are proficient mm -hmm. at their craft. It's Absolutely. amazing. But what the Lord just showed me was that sometimes we can be fearful of the heights that he is taking us to, but mm. there is always a safety net. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Right. Yeah. So we can think, what am I waiting for? I'm about to, I'm about to free fall. Mm -hmm. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. Is the Lord going to catch me? Mm -hmm. Psalms 23 says, yes, he is. Yes. Yeah. He's already, he's already got your net there. He's already got your net. He's already got a plan. Yeah. That's the price. price. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I would just say that one of the final verses that really came to mind for me um, when I was thinking about this, or I feel like the Holy Spirit highlighted, was Psalm 27, and it's verses 13 through 14. And it said, I would have fainted mm -hmm. unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord yes. in the land of the living. You know, so many times as Christians, you know, we can be real old school and just say, oh, you know, I just want to hear God say, well done. I'm going to get to heaven and everything's going to be good. No, mm -hmm. I mean, he's going to do it. That's going to happen. But what about the time that we have here? Like you said, you know, this is our time to kind of practice and, and, you know, do the things. drill that, season. Absolutely. If we didn't really know that we were going to see the goodness of God right here, in, in, in this place where we are in these, in these streets <laughs> where we are, then we may have fainted. We may have given up. We may have turned our back on the Lord. We may have said, no, I'm not doing this anymore, but it says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage. Okay? Yes. And how do we be of good courage? There has to be something that we hang that courage on. There's, there's mm -hmm. some belief behind that, that allows us to be brave. Yes. Okay. And he shall wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. So what are we waiting on? The Lord. We're waiting on the Lord. That's good. Mm -hmm. We're waiting on him to be God. We're waiting on him to do exactly what he says he's going to do. We're waiting on him to take us to those heights, but already have that net. You know, we're not just out here waiting with no purpose and with no um, belief system in place and no mm -hmm. expectation. Yeah. That's not easy. That's not fun. And that's not what God has for us. When yeah. he says, wait, he's saying you have a reason to wait. Yeah. Because I've promised you a lot of stuff and yeah. you can count on it coming through. Now, yeah. get going. Get going. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know what's in occurring to me? So, when, when you say wait on the Lord, mm -hmm. my human side kicks in, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't like to be patient mm -mm. because we know God's timing is not our timing. He's not even in time. Mm-mm. Right. Right. And so even as the word says, wait on the Lord, sometimes the lineup is not that we're really waiting on him because he's already done it because he's in the past, the present and, and the future all at the same it time. It is finished. It is finished. Mm -hmm. Right. And so even though we're waiting, we're not in my interpretation. I could be wrong. We're not waiting on him. Mm -hmm. We're waiting on the alignment of things to line up. So good for the right timing because mm -hmm. you never know you could have gone in that restaurant mm -hmm. right and you could have been um, on the tail end of that whole interaction right but you were there on purpose for a reason on time on time mm -hmm. and not only were you there there were other people that were witnessing that weren't prompted they were prompted in different ways exactly to respond mm -hmm. but your assignment Hallelujah. Your assignment right. was something different. And so when God says, wait, mm -hmm. and I know you know about timing because sometimes you end up in places and it's like, why am I here, Lord? Right. Right. Yeah. And I, I usually say um, when I'm going to trainings or when I'm out in public or I'm going to a service or something, I say, Lord, show me 
what your purpose is. Absolutely. Am I there to receive mm -hmm. or am I there to pour out? Absolutely. Or is there an interchange? Like, is there, is there both here? Mm -hmm. Who am I supposed to connect mm -hmm. with? What am I supposed to hear that I can take with me to the next moment, to the next day, to the next hour? Mm -hmm. And so wait on the Lord, be of good courage. I think we wait with joy mm -hmm. knowing that it's already done. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, um, you just reminded me of a Quinla life hack. Okay. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. So something the Holy Spirit just kind of uh, brought to mind for me. I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but I am going to tell you uh, in this particular thing. Give what, us the snippet. <laughs> I'm going to give you the 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 short the short version of the Quinla life hack is. There is a shortcut sometimes. There is a shortcut to the timing of the Lord. It has to do with your heart and it has to do with you listening and your obedience. So I've been in situations before where I've just been, and I'm sure nobody else understands this, right? Because there are verses in the scripture, like the one you read earlier, being in the miry clay, yeah. the pit, the bog, right? The bog. <laughs> I'll be there and I'll be like, okay, I, I'm done. I don't want to be here anymore, Lord. You know, it's like, what am I supposed to get? So this is my life hack. Ask him, Lord, what, what, yes. what am I supposed to get in this? Am I missing it? If I've yes. missed it, please bring it back around. Help me to see it because I don't yes. want to be here forever. If there is a way that the time can be shortened for me to be able to get what it is or do what you want me to do that I'm supposed to be learning in this situation, then help me to get understanding. Give me your wisdom in this situation. And I promise you, that if there is something that the Holy Spirit wants to show you, he will, and he can cut that time short because mm -hmm. like you said, he's out of time, right? Mm -hmm. So he's not worried about necessarily the time. He knows he's going to line it all up for the yeah. good of his, those yeah. who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. But for us, time is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and sometimes we're done. Yeah. yeah so life hack. <laughs> yeah. So there's wisdom in knowing how to ask. Yes. And even if you're prompted mm -hmm. and you're like, Lord, I don't even know how to ask this. Mm -hmm. Lord, show me what I need to know to know even what to ask. Absolutely. Right. Yes, absolutely. So that's all I was going to say. There's wisdom in the asking. There is. And you know what? I, that just kind of, I, I'm going to piggyback again here especially as counselors, as therapists, right? So many times you'll hear people say, you know, that maybe God's not in it. Mm -hmm. um, I have to disagree because I know that the Lord called me to be a counselor. Mm -hmm. um, but also in the word, it tells us that, you know, good decisions are made in the midst of many wise counselors. Mm -hmm. So wise mm -hmm. counsel is so important you know, yes, we ask the Lord, but we also ask those who have the wisdom of the Lord, who have the heart, you know, a heart of love for us and that are walking the way that we want to go. So absolutely, it is so important for us to know when we need to ask. And even if we're afraid or don't know how, mm -hmm. still ask anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And be prepared for those answers to come in different forms. Absolutely. Right. So it can come through a counselor. It can come through a pastor. It can come through a mama. Mm -hmm. It can come through your children. Yes. Right. Yeah. I um, think, I think we learned that today. Right. <laughs> right. It can come through dreams. Yes. And so I think um, when you have a level of awareness um, to how God can respond and having expectation mm -hmm. that he, he's going to he's answer, going to do it. Yes. He's going to answer you. But don't put limits on God. Amen. Okay. Um, he can't be bound by limits. Mm -hmm. That means be on the lookout. You know, I, I talk about um, to my clients who deal with different um, issues, anxiety and hypervigilance. And I usually highlight that there is, there is a slim difference between hypervigilance and vigilance mm -hmm. because both mean that you're on guard. Right. Hypervigilance is when you are waiting with anxiety. Mm -hmm. And it is tense. It's uncomfortable. It's stressful. Yes. Vigilance is watching with purpose. Yes. Right. And so when we watch with purpose for what God's answers are, we can 
activate those answers a whole lot quicker than we can when we're in this nervous state. Absolutely. And thank you, Lord. Well, I just, you know, I we, always when we get into these situations, um, we want to make sure that we're doing something to um, encourage our the people who are listening Amen. Um, to step out in faith with a new nugget. Right. Hey, man. What's your nugget? My, here, my, here's my nugget. <laughs> my nugget is it's actually exactly what you said. Hey, man. You know that um, don't be afraid to have expectations that God's going to answer what you've asked, but it may look crazy. It may not be anything that you were expecting. And that's OK. Be OK with that. But always keep those antennas up looking for the answers because he is so faithful to answer and to show you. And then the other part is once he does show you, let me say it again. Once he does show you, (laughs) be obedient and faithful to listen. You know, if it seems like a scary option that he's telling you, tell him, say, Lord, this seems scary. This seems, um, you know, out of my wheelhouse. This seems like something I don't know whether it's you or not. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's big enough to handle that. You can go ahead and tell him and yeah. ask him to confirm it. Ask him to show you. Yeah. Right. So I'm about to back up your nugget. Oh, oh come God. on. Yeah. Come on. You got some sauce for the nugget. Uh, it's sweet and sour sauce. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Honey must whatever. Choose your sauce. Um, Isaiah 41 and 10 says, fear not. For I am with you. Yes. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Yes. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous yes. right hand. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So good. Yeah, I think that um that was I think that that's kind of what it all comes back around to. Something you had mentioned earlier is that, you know, we wait on the Lord. He already has the answers, but ultimately the reason why we wait is because God's going to show who he is in that situation, right? He's going to be God. He's going to come out on top. He's going to receive the glory. Yes, he is. And even we're going to be built built up in that process in, in our faith, in knowing that God does, completes, is exactly who he says he is and does exactly what he says he's going to do. Right. And then we move forward from there, almost like my daughter. Right. So before she was like, Oh, it's scary going out with mom. Now she's like, mom, you better do something. Yeah. She's been built up in the faith. God has shown her that he has been faithful every time to work in a way that gives people what they need at the time. So thank you, Lord. We just honor you in that. We pray Amen. that that we pray that the part of the outcome of this would be that people would be built up in their faith Amen. and that they would completely and totally understand that we wait on you knowing that you're going to come through and you're going to glorify and honor yourself and you deserve all of that honor and glory. So we can't go wrong. Amen. We can't go wrong in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So what are you waiting for? Yeah. Don't wait no more. (laughs) Thanks for tuning in to Midnight Mastermind Ministries podcast. We love you. We bless you. Like, share, follow, subscribe. Have a great night, y'all. God bless. God bless y'all.